facing a civic challenge, it's important to be able to distinguish the aspects of that challenge which are adaptive and those which are technical. And let me give you an example of the difference between technical and adaptive, and we'll come back and we'll take a look at a civic challenge. So to begin with, a uh, technical challenge might be best exemplified by um, breaking your arm, all right? A situation where you've broken your arm. Uh, the actual problem and the solution are fairly clear. Uh, for generations, we've been fixing broken arms, and there are experts that know how to do that. You get yourself to an emergency room, have a doctor take care of it, and what you want from that doctor is you want him or her to expedite as fast as possible a fix, and that is the essence of a technical challenge. A technical challenge is one where the problem and the solution is clear, whose work it belongs to, thank goodness we've got an authority that we can have that can address that, and we can get this situation fixed as fast as possible. Now, another medical example might be more adaptive. And uh, let's take the example of a person who's recovering from a heart attack. So in the heart attack situation, um, the person has had all the technical fixes. The heart's been put back together again. But now it's their time to learn how to live a new lifestyle. Obviously, something's got to change, or they're going to be right back to where they were before. So here's where they're learning comes in. The person in order to find a solution is going to have to adapt beginning with learning about what that problem really was and also what a solution might look like. So it's not clear to that person exactly. Now they can have recommendations, but not all those recommendations are going to work for them. So there's going to be a, a sense of learning about how to deal with this new way of living. Interestingly enough, a friend of mine who had a heart attack said that the whole family's lifestyle had to change. It wasn't just them that had to change how they ate. They had to change their menu at home. They had to change how they addressed whether they went out to eat or didn't go out to eat. Their family had to have input. They had to implement exercise routines that fit within their whole family. So there wasn't like one expert that could come in and say, okay, this is how it's going to work for your family. It was them sitting down together and talking about what life would look like now that dad's had a heart attack and he's putting his life back together with a new lifestyle. Okay, so stakeholders had to be involved. So you can imagine that there was a certain amount of experimentation. The same way of doing things didn't work, but we don't know right away what will work. So we're trying new recipes, we're trying new exercise routines, and what we're trying to do here is probably not fix the situation right away, but make progress to a healthier lifestyle. So again, the adaptive challenge is about learning, engaging stakeholders, because there's no single expert, and making progress and experimentation rather than having a fast, immediate fix. Now, the reality of distinguishing the two is that most civic issues and challenges are both. And so if we're really talking about both, what, are we, what, what example could we use? Uh, the example that comes to mind is um, consolidating schools. You have two schools that have different cultures, they have different expectations, and they have different ways of doing things. If you're going to consolidate these two schools, there are probably some very clear technical things that you can do. Uh, combining budgets, uh, deciding which of the technologies those schools use work better or or not as well, so deciding to have, maybe having an expert come in and combine the networks that are working, moving things to the facility that works best, and getting that done in time for the school year to start, expediting that as quickly as possible. But in the same way, that very same issue, again, we're talking about this world of both, that very same issue, consolidating in school, has some very powerful adaptive components. We're going to have to learn for the first time possibly, about what these two communities expect out of their school, how much engagement has there been uh, among parents, uh, how have uh, the various sports activities been conducted, uh, what are the teachers, how are they going to come together around their learning objectives and their approach, and under possibly a new administration. They're going to have to come together and talk about, together, some of the challenges that they face. They may have to design curriculum together in a new way. They may have to engage their community in a new way, especially because we're changing the culture, we're actually going
going to fit, we're going to feel resistance. So you can't just change the school that dramatically and not ask the parents, the businesses, those people who have supported that school to engage in the discussion somehow. There's going to have to be stakeholder involvement in order to make progress toward having a new school, one that is unique to both of the schools that existed beforehand. Chances are that's not going to happen on September 1 when the door opens. The building might be ready, but the adaptive work still needs to take place. There will be additional learning throughout that year. There will be a need to bring stakeholders together to address those issues. And there will be efforts that's tried, that you try and don't work. Some that make progress and, you, and others that don't. So the challenge here is to distinguish what aspect of that work is technical and what aspect of that work is adaptive and to attend to the specific demands